Hello, good people of YouTube. Sealord here, and today we are potentially starting a new series on the channel called What Worships Myth Busting. What we are planning to do with this series is take a look at some of the myths and rumors about the game and primarily game mechanics, you know, things that we can go into a training room and test out and see if we can get down to the truth of the manor. If you guys do like this video by the end of it or by any point in it, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below so we can see that you guys do enjoy this series and we can continue it if that is the case. And we're going to start out with one that's pretty relevant to many of you guys watching as most of you are Battleship mains because I'm a filthy Battleship main and most of you of course are drawn to the channel because of that and it is of course the well the thing you see in the title salvo firing versus sequential firing or single fire whatever you want to call it so this is one I've heard quite a bit uh, in my time in this game I've been playing this game for about six or seven years now so I've been around for a minute and this one is the notion that sequential firing for um, a particular reason is more preferable to salvo firing. Now, salvo versus sequential firing. Salvo firing is when you double click on your left mouse button and all the guns fire at once. You get, you know, one salvo sent out at the same time. It's a giant clump of shells sent toward your enemy. Sequential firing is when you hold down left mouse or, you know, individually click to fire the guns one at a time, and you're firing the guns in a sequence rather than, again, just throwing a wall of shells at the enemy ships. So, the reason given for sequential firing being the preferable method is that when you fire your guns all at once in one salvo, you're getting essentially one roll of the dice with RNG and all the other you know numbers that go into calculating the dispersion of your shells whereas when you fire your guns one at a time you're getting to roll the dice well what one to however many turrets are on your ship in the case of this video for the test i use the montana so one out of four times if you will with uh salvo firing you get to roll the dice four to four times with sequential firing now um, up here at the front, there is a lot, a lot that goes into calculating the dispersion of your shells and the accuracy of your shells within, you know, your dispersion ellipse that is generated when you fire your guns. Uh, so, of course, naturally, you know, just by saying that, you might be thinking, well, of course, then you want, you know, more than one dice rolled at a time. So you can, you know, pre preferably get better numbers right so yes there is that but just know there's a lot going into this there's a lot of random numbers involved so you could probably sit in a training room and ha fire a thousand salvos and you know the results will vary greatly which is again why i chose the montana for this test because the montana is in the american battleship line and the American Battleship Line, they have a couple of things going for them. Uh, they get a much, a much, much more consistent set of dispersion ellipses. And they can also fit the Artillery Plotting Room Mod 2 module, which gives you another 11% buff to your dispersion ellipse. So their pattern and their special equipment leads to them being some of the most consistent battleship guns in the game which is why i chose the montana because if the ship is consistently accurate which it is it's it's well known for that any change any improvement or any type of detriment to the accuracy should be pretty easily noted it's not like the japanese battleship um, dispersion pattern where it's all over the place, right? The Japanese dispersion pattern is incredibly wonky and incredibly inconsistent. The American one is good and consistent, hence why I picked the Montana. So any type of massive improvement or detriment to the accuracy should be noted in the tests that I conducted for this. So how did I test this? Well, I'm glad you asked. So I went into a training room and spawned in four Hanovers. 
I alternated between firing at them in salvo fire mode and volley fire mode for 10 shots apiece. And I'm counting how many shells hit the ship, not necessarily, you know, which one did more damage because of course there's so many things that happen once you hit the ship that can cause, you know, some shots to do a great deal of damage and some shots can hit pretty much exactly the same place and do you know a negligible amount of damage sometimes because you know sometimes they open the superstructure sometimes they hit the water and then hit the hull so yeah we're just counting the shells that hit the ships not if they were over pins or pins or whatever and that does include shells from let's say if the last salvo does sink the handover but of course you know shells hit them and one shell does the last you know couple thousand hp of worth of damage to them we're still counting the ones that hit the corpse afterwards i went back in the replay and counted those so for each one as well i parked the same distance away 11.9 uh, kilometers at the same angle aimed at the same spot on each handover for 10 shots right between the uh, the funnels right at the waterline where you would you can normally want to aim at when uh, going up against an enemy battleship and then we began so the results salvo one well i should say hanover one which was 10 shots in the salvo firing mode had 55 shells hit in 10 shots so out of 120 shells 55 hit which is like what 48 percent accuracy yay uh, God, don't we love battleship guns, even tier 10 battleship guns. So after that, the next turn over got 10 shots in the volley fire mode. And those were 51 hits, which is less than what we got with Salvo 1. So interesting. Next turn over, which received 10 shots in the Salvo firing mode, received 52 shell hits. So only one more than, the, than volley 1 but three less than salvo one interesting the next handover well i should say the last handover handover number four received 10 shots in the volley firing mode and she received 54 hits in the volley firing mode which is only one less than handover one which received 10 shots in the salvo firing mode at 55 hits so what we're seeing here is that the difference, if any, is negligible. We have a salvo that got 55, a volley that got 51, then a salvo that got 52, and then a volley that got 54. So this is all like, it's at most a four shell difference over 10 shots. So it's pretty dang negligible from here. Dare I say, there is not a difference at all. And if you want to know the truth behind the manner, behind the game mechanics, this test is just kind of a proof of concept thing because we've been told how this works. We've been knowing about it for years. The information I should say from Wargaming has been out there for years. Wargaming released a nifty little series some time ago called How It Works. And in this series, they go over pretty much every mechanic in the game including how these dispersion ellipses are calculated. If you go out there and read some old Reddit posts, and if you can still get on the forum somehow, some old forum post, you'll see there's an argument, and probably the origin of this argument, saying that, again, with the volley fire, you're getting one roll of the dice because you're you know firing all your guns at once, but with the sequential firing mode, you're getting four rolls of the dice because you're firing, you know, your turrets in a sequential order. Truth be told, mechanically, there's no difference. Because for each turret on your ship, every time it's fired, each individual turret calculates its own ellipse, as stated here in the How It Works video. Its center is at the aiming point. The dispersion ellipse is formed after each shot, perpendicular to the ideal trajectory of a shell's flight. An ellipse is formed for each turret. Your shells will fly through the formed ellipse. So, it doesn't really matter. Mechanically. Now, in-game, 
there are certainly situations where salvo fire is preferred and where sequential fire might be preferred. Uh, sequential fire, when it comes to battleships, if you're trying to, let's say, walk your shells in or someone's maneuvering and you're trying to, you know, track their movements with your cursor and trying to spread your shells out over a larger area to hit that ship as it maneuvers, yeah, sequential fire would probably be preferred in that instance. But let's say you have a ship that's showing you flat broadside and you, you're you pretty dang confident that you know you got your lead right, you got your uh, height right, let it rip. And you'll deliver, all in the case of the Montana, 12 shells in that one point of aim. What, what really matters is your point of aim more so than the individual um the the individual dispersion ellipses because if you can be really sure about that one point of aim yeah let the salvo fire go but again if you're trying to you know trace someone's movements or you're really unsure about where your point of aim needs to be and you want to spread it out yeah that's when the sequential fire might be a little bit better so in terms of mechanics though it works just the same it doesn't matter if you fire them all at once if you fire them in sequential firing mode each turret calculates its own ellipse and inside of that ellipse you know there's all that's where all the number crunching goes in that's where your sigma comes into play your maximum dispersion and all that jazz there's a lot of numbers behind your shell placement that isn't shown in game in fact, the maximum dispersion you see in game is your horizontal dispersion, not your vertical dispersion. A lot of players may not know that that dispersion number is just one of the axes. So, yeah. Do whatever you're comfortable with is my suggestion. If you've been letting it rip in salvo firing mode, continue to let it rip in salvo firing mode. If you've been staggering them with volley fire, let it rip in volley fire. Uh, what I do think leads to this rumor is that when you let all of your guns rip at once, you get kind of this blob of shells. And you you can't really see the individual turrets dispersion because everything's so, you know, clumpy together. But when you go for the volley firing mode, you can see that, hey, turret one got a good spread. Oh god, turret 2's gunners need to lay off the bottle because th their spread is all over the place. And then turret and tur turret 3 and turret 4, again, they might get more accurate spreads and the last turret might, you know, completely drop the ball. When you fire them one at a time, it's a little bit easier to see that versus again firing it all at once and you just see a mess of shells go all, go all over the place. And from someone that's been playing this game for seven years, you get kind of used to staring at the shells and you can kind of pick them apart even in the mess of them all together. But it is still a lot easier for someone who has been playing this game for seven years to see them in the sequential firing mode versus the dispersion and the volley firing mode. So... As far as we're concerned here, this myth is busted. Again, mechanically, doesn't matter. In game, depending on the situation, you may want to use one or the other. At the end of the day, my suggestion, again, do what makes you feel comfortable. No need to change it, because again, mechanically, it's no different. So if you guys enjoyed this video in this first series in this myth-busting series, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Tuesday, wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys the next one.